The Jeffrey Epstein case has puzzled us for years. Where are the flight logs? Where are the surveillance videos the Fed seized from his homes? And how did just everything happen to go wrong the night of his death? But the biggest question we have is, how was Epstein able to prey on young women for so long right under the government's nose? Many believe Epstein was an informant working for the feds, and there's some truth to that. An FBI document from around the time of Epstein's sweetheart deal in 2008 shows that he, quote, provided information to the FBI as agreed upon, adding that, quote, no prosecution will occur in this matter as long as Epstein continues to uphold his agreement with the state of Florida. Now, that deal allowed him to rape and traffic young women for another decade. But that doesn't explain why the FBI turned a blind eye to Epstein's detailed sex allegations in the 90s. Maria Farmer was a young artist working at Epstein's property in 1996 when she says Epstein and his partner, Ghislaine Maxwell, raped her. She says she first went to the NYPD and then to the FBI, but no one took any action at all. The bureau sat on her claims for a decade. How many women could have been saved if Epstein had been brought to justice in the 90s? Well, Maria's attorneys believe Epstein could have been an FBI informant who was allowed to get away with sex crimes, and now she's filing a $600 million claim against the FBI for their, quote, grotesque failures in this case. Both the FBI and the NYPD declined comment for the segment. Here now, Maria Farmer, who was the first victim to go to the authorities about Jeffrey Epstein and her attorney, Jennifer Freeman. So, Maria, how did you first meet Jeffrey Epstein? He asked me to work for him at uh, first acquiring art. Okay, so were asked. you an artist and he asked you to get involved with some of his yes. lucrative art collection? Right, so <laughs> he didn't really have a lucrative art collection. He had um, a little bit of uh, garish taste, I guess, and he needed help. See, here's the thing, Jesse. I thought Jeffrey was like a daddy Warbucks because that's how he presented himself. And in those early days, he was a very, um, just very charismatic, charming, handsome, uh, apparently generous, but never generous person, right? He held a, a platinum carrot. <laughs> and basically, he was um, a wonderful employer for a while. He was very kind to me. Guilan was abusive verbally, and he would always come to my defense, and I didn't get they were grooming me, playing good cop, bad cop. What happened the night you were assaulted in Ohio? Ghislaine came out in a, in a bathrobe, and I'd never seen her like that. I'd seen her in a bathing suit with a robe, but never just like a bathrobe without anything. And I could tell she didn't have clothes underneath, and I felt so uncomfortable, because this is my employer, right? Why am I seeing her? And she's being strange, like showing part of her body, and I just felt uncomfortable, and she said, come with me. And I knew immediately something was nefarious. I just felt the energy, and I went with her, and Jeffrey was lying in bed watching a math program on PBS. Epstein first asked me to rub his feet, and I knew that was weird because he was my employer. So I went to give him a foot massage, and he began uh, kind of touching me, and he asked me to sit between them on the bed. And I felt sick, and I started crying, actually. It just felt so strange and awful, and they just, you know, did their thing, and I basically escape my body. So in 96, you spoke to the NYPD about an assault that happened in Ohio. Correct. What did the NYPD do from there? They kind of, uh, they didn't write down everything, which upsets me, because they thought it was too much. They said, Maria, we want this report to like stick or whatever, so what we're gonna do is right, they wrote down a little number on a sheet of paper and tore it, a little sheet of paper and handed it to me, not even a sticky note, and I was shaking, and it was the FBI's phone number, and I called them. So you spoke to the FBI in 96 after speaking to the NYPD. Did the FBI follow up with you? No, they did not, Jesse. In fact, I spoke to the man for 45 minutes, and I said, well, should I call the other? FBI agencies like Ohio, because this happened in Ohio. So I ended up telling them it's an international pedophile 
and child, I didn't know the word trafficking, I said kidnapping ring. And I said, I was kidnapped, and he's having all these children come and go all day. What are you going to do? And he goes, well, you can do what you want. And he hung up on me. The I never FBI heard from him again. Ten hung years. Up on you. He hung up on me. That's right. They hung up on me. And when was the next time you spoke to the FBI? In 2006, when they then came to me. I'm in North Carolina, hiding in the woods. When I answered the door, I asked them if they were there about my student loans. And they laughed and said, no, it's about your 1996 Epstein report. So when the FBI did speak to you, years later, I, you can't even count how many more victims of Epstein there were. What did they say to you then? And my agent, she said, Maria, we're going to get him. Anyway, bottom line, they didn't get him, Jesse. So they didn't nothing. do anything. Nothing ever nothing. happened. Chris Ray is now the director of the FBI. What would you tell him if you saw him? Christopher Ray, um, I want you to look me in the eye and I want you to apologize to me. I want you to say, Maria, I am so sorry you lost your youth. I am so sorry you were being mocked right now online because we won't release your 1996 report. So we're essentially lying about you. We're essentially saying you're worthless and we don't care about you. And that's how I feel. I want Christopher Ray to say, I'm so sorry we've treated you like you're worthless. I'm so sorry we didn't do our job for the American people. Jennifer, if I could ask you, you're now going to take legal action against the FBI? Yes, we've put in place um, a procedure, which is to file a notice of claim, which is a precursor to any lawsuit against a federal agency. You have to give them six months' notice. Uh, this is statutorily required. So we are in the process of getting that notice of claim filed with the FBI. And what's the basis of the claim, specifically? The basis of the claim is very much about the failure, the utter failure, of the FBI to pay any attention to Maria Farmer's uh, 1996 report, and also so many other reports after that, including her 19, 2006 report and so many other victims' reports. And they ignored them, and they didn't take them seriously. And as a Sorry. result, this created nearly a quarter of a century of victims. They could have been spared if the FBI had done their job. Are you going to take this case all the way? Because the FBI has a history of settling. I and mean, they paid $130 million to Parkland shooting victims. You remember they were alerted, did not mm -hmm. do anything. The Charleston Church shooting victims, they settled for $100 million. Are you going to take the FBI's money or are you going to get answers and discovery? We want answers. We want an investigation. We want action. We want an investigation. And we want accountability. That's what we all want. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer. I'm glad you've taken the case. Want. And Maria, again, it's just a, a horrific story. And thank you're you, a very Jesse. brave, brave woman. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.